Welcome everyone to another edition of the Making an Impact podcast here at twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground. I am your host, Chad Chechabetcha Porto. Joining me as always is Zachary Tyler Pew Pew. Fairy Godparents! Duncan. What? <laughs> The uh, the crazy guy from uh, Fairly Odd Parents, he would always like spaz out when he said Fairly, oh. Fairly, Fairly Odd Parents. Crocker? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I remember he looked like an adult Mandark. <laughs> I mean, the, there's nothing saying that he wasn't. Right? Like uh, you know, one's owned <laughs> by Warner Brothers, one's owned by Viacom. But yeah, definitely. Adult man dark. Adult man dork. Dingle bird. <laughs> Fairly odd parents. <laughs> I just like that he talked like a, uh, a Japanese um, dub from like a Godzilla film. Yeah. That was the best part. <laughs> So we're talking odd wrestling, fairly odd wrestling, putting Rich Swan in the main event. <laughs> uh, I couldn't make it work. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Holy shit. Has there been a more underwhelming main event for Bound for Glory in the history of Bound for Glory? Confirmed, signed, sealed, and delivered. It's ours, and, and we don't want it. It's 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 Rich Swan versus Eric Young for the world title. Why? Uh, what was the main event for the Bound for Glory in Japan? It was Tajiri and the Great Muda versus James Storm ah. and Sonata. Now, granted, at the time, I mean... Sonata was about as over as the bottom rope. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you'll. I feel like that was counterbalanced a little, at least a little bit by, you know, Muda and Tajiri. Yes, but also Sonata's also super fucking over now. Yeah. So, like, at the time, not the greatest of, of like, name value, but you got Tajiri and Damuta. And they do, and they do the, the Mistin all together. It was, it was fucking cool. Yeah, they missed in like it's a goddamn scene out of a Hallmark movie. I don't know how the two parallel with one another. Just fucking roll with it. I, I'm going to bed in like 90 minutes. I'm at the end of my day. <laughs> I'm going to try to be funny, but it's mostly just going to be nonsensical. <laughs> That's just yeah. the way it is. <laughs> like I genuinely cannot understand for the life of me why this is the main event of Bound for Glory. Like, it's not even good enough to be the middle match or the opener of Bound for Glory, let alone the main event. Right. Like, holy shit, you have some super fucking inflated ideas on who Eric Young is. My God. Like, all of the praise we were giving them heading into Slamversary, gone. It's fucking gone, man. Mm hmm. <sighs> just oh god this company is making it hard to love them still and zach i need to encourage you to watch this week's episode of ring of honor i think you're gonna love it yeah it's technically six segments all together plus an intro four four plus minute long um different interviews with the, the four competitors of the two matches and then two mm -hmm. wrestling matches with a 15 minute time limit and rules that are forced to be followed. Ooh. Yeah! Everything we've been talking about for the last year is being used. Now, granted, it's only going to be used for the tournament that they're doing. They're doing a, a uh, to crown a new Ring of Honor peer champion. Uh-huh. But it's fucking good. And at least for the next 10 weeks or so, I'm going to enjoy the shit out of this. 12 weeks? Eight matches, first round, that's eight weeks. Four matches, 12 weeks, two matches, 14 weeks, 15 weeks. The next 15 weeks, I'm going to enjoy the shit out of this tournament. 
What did we get an impact? Oh, the guy that no one wants to buy tickets for had his ankle not really broken, and he didn't really have to retire, and now we're going to put him in the main event of a pay-per-view that no one's going to want to buy. Who's he facing? Someone over? That mid-card guy from NXT that got released? Oh, that narrows it down. Oh, that mid-card guy from NXT who got released and before that was a mid-card guy in Impact Wrestling slash TNA that no one liked? Well, that narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I'm gobsmacked that after the... T- I just Impact has had the run of the worst world champions of a company that's actually trying I've ever seen. Like, yeah. I would say they don't have anyone to blame but themselves. I would say going back to Aldis. Yep. The the only good champion they had was Lashley. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. Like Eddie, kind of his first run, but that you know that's two. You had two out of how many? And it's not even like they're picking the wrong guys, although in this instance, they are absolutely picking the wrong guys. And Tessa was the wrong guy. But, like, Aldis was the right guy. But they had him barely be able to beat Sting and AJ Styles when, they, when the odds were eight on one. That's how you get buried right there, kids. Eric Young wasn't over the first time he was champion. I don't even remember who the fuck was after Eric Young. Kurt Angle? Bobby Roode? Uh, was it? Who was it after Eric Young? It might have been Rude. Was it? Let's see. I feel like I feel like it was maybe Lashley. It was either Lashley or Rude. I feel like, I feel like it was Lashley. Was it Lashley? Impact World Championship. <laughs> Let's see. Eric Young. Yep, it was Lashley. It was Magnus, then Young, then Lashley, then Rude, then Lashley. That wasn't even Lashley's good title run. It's good title run came second when he won the uh, X Division and Grand Championship and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So, we had EC3. Yep. He was a raging failure. And it wasn't even his fault. No. (laughs) They had him win the title on tape TV and then went into a pay-per-view where he wasn't champion and, I think, lost to the guy who was. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, holy, you couldn't have gone, hey, you know, here's an idea. Let's do a bunch of tape segments backstage with EC3 where we just pretend that he he's just not, he doesn't want to come out to the ring and build up to his eventual coronation on the next set of tapings. No, no, let's just have him win the title before the pay-per-view. What? <laughs> I've heard some dumb shit, but Dixie, goddamn. So you you fucked Magnus, you fucked EC3, you fucked Lashley, you fucked Eddie, you you, you fucked Pentagon, that was fucking dumb. You <laughs> fucked Eli, that was even dumber. Like Alberto was always gonna be a flop, but you put the butt on him in the first yeah. place, which was fucking stupid. You put the belt on Morrison, which was fucking stupid. You put the belt on Brian Cage. He that was fine. Like he's not, he oh. has no personality. But all right, he's at least something. And then you're uh, like, uh, he's something until he does a stupid spot with John Morrison and breaks his back. Fucking idiot. And then and then he goes and then you go on and do Callahan, which is the right call. Like he's a great heel. Everyone has a reaction when you when you see him. And he can work with any style. Oh, but he holds the belt for three fucking weeks and loses to a chick who doesn't even have the uh, the, the fucking decency to show up to work. And now here we are, God, goddamn again, with you putting the belt on X guys and then promising to give it to someone else, probably just to keep them to, to stick around. Like, holy fucking hell, man. I swear to God, if Rich Swan leaves by March 
and he wins the belt. I'm just going to go to Canada myself and pimp smack these two dudes. What are they fucking doing to more? Callus, get your heads out of your asses and realize that you are fucking up prime opportunities to build your brand. Like, Rich Swan isn't over. He's not. He, he wasn't over in WWE. He wasn't over on the Indies. He was a great also and. You know, Tom Welling. Uh, what's the Luther's name? Uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, Christian Kruick. Also and Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Whatever the fucking Jonathan Kent was. Snyder. Jonathan Schneider. What was his name? Yes, you got it. Oh, was that right? <laughs> I, th- uh, I believe so. <laughs> I was just kind of being a cock at that point. <laughs> I like I got it right. But like... You ain't building the show around Pa Kent, goddammit. He's also and in the cast. You want him for his five minutes of soulful, fatherly advice, and then you want to be done with him. Thanks, Pa. You can spend the next 38 minutes twiddling your thumbs. It was a net O'Toole, not Peter O'Toole. My bad. You you, you combined them. Yeah. I don't know where you got I don't know where you got Peter from. I think Peter O'Toole's uh, like her father. Ah. Peter O'Toole. Google. So, I don't know, man. Like, And, like, here's the thing. Even Marcus, you know, Powerbomb Jitsu, like, these are cats that are, like, you know, you would think would be totally on board with Rich Swan, but everyone's like, nah, we're good. We're good. Uh, Peter O'Toole is not related to Annette O'Toole. He was in Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, well, there you go. He played T.E. Lawrence. Hmm. Yes. But, like, there's no one who's sounding the Rich Swan deserves world title alarm bell. No. So I'm sitting Not here all. just fucking banging my head into the goddamn radiator. I don't even own a radiator. I had to go rent one just to go do this. And I'm trying to figure out why the fuck this is the thing. I, I can't, man, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I, I truly can't. I cannot begin to fathom why this is a thing. I'm you know, at a loss. As, we, as we said, as we said last week, this is. DC rebirth all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make promises. You, you keep us hooked for a couple weeks, and then uh, and then you give it to schmucks. Fucking Brian Michael Bendis. Hey, Bendis is finally ending his run on Superman. Yeah. After he killed the character. After Tomasi and Johns, not Johns, Tomasi and Jurgen spent fucking Jergens. two and a half, two point seven five years. Rebuilding the brand. Fucking Bendis steamrolls it in two goddamn issues. Oh, Superboy, you know, Connor, he, he's 17 now instead of 12. Why? Uh. I want to take a tack hammer to him. Just so bad. Just like right in the back of the knee. Just one time. Just to let him know, like, that's how bad you pissed me off with your terrible writing. <sighs> That's how that's how angry I am with this goddamn fucking impact roster at the moment. Like we were promised all these things, but instead we're getting Brian Myers. Bri- you teased the reunion of aces and eights, and instead we get Brian Myers. What? Oh, I, for- <laughs> I forgot about them teasing aces and eights for weeks. I didn't, because I was like, Anderson's coming back. That's awesome. Fuck yeah. You had all these opportunities to sign all these free agents and you settled with Brian Myers? Like, holy hell. You have Eddie Edwards, Rob Van Dam, Tommy Dreamer, Rhino. Granted, some of these dudes are over 40. Some are pushing 50. But they're all better options than Eric Young. They're all better options than Rich Swan. This is like... Yeah. Fu- 
like fucking, this is like, you know, having a quarterback on your roster, you know, is good enough to get your wins, but instead you want, you go with the younger kid because you don't know what you have in him and you want to find out. What? That's not a logical sense to go forward with, homie. You want to find out what you got with him? Why? You know what you got in other opportunities. Seriously, it would have... The entire point of any combat sport is to get someone who can get ratings, pop a number, draw on fan support, what have you, as your champion. That is why you don't book fighters in title fights in real fighting sports that you think are boring. Doesn't matter how good they are. If they can't drop or pop a number, you don't bring them in. You, you, you put them on the outlier until it becomes to the point where he, they deserve a shot and people are just clamoring for it. I know you're not going to get the reference, but when you're looking at like MMA, he just retired, but when he was at his peak, John Fitch was riding like 18 wins or some bullshit run like that in a row, 12 of which or 8 of which or whatever it was was in the UFC. And it got to a point where, despite the fact Dana White didn't want him in the title fight, fans were like, he's won 45,000 fucking fights in a row. Give him a title shot. Until you get to that critical level with, with a talent, you don't put someone in who doesn't have name value. I, I don't know what the end game is. And after what we've seen with the last few years of Callis and Demore booking, we kind of know that title runs when they end eventually mean that that's when the talent leaves. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, what, is Eddie gone? Is Eric Young gone? Like, is he already gone? Do you bring him in, attempt to, you know, persuade him to sign a deal with a title belt and then go, oh, I guess he's not going to go. We'll just put the belt on Swan. Because, like, I don't know, is Eddie leaving? Like, shit, man. Honest to God, I would rather them just do Tommy Dream or Rob Van Dam made event of Bound for Glory or Rhino Rob Van Dam made event of Bound for Glory. Because it would be at least something worth watching as opposed to Young and Swan in some type of, you broke it in my ankle, I break it in your face angle. And I, I, I just I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we go from getting EC3 back, the Good Brothers, fucking Rhino, I guess, if you want to you know, count him, and, and having Sammy Callahan on your roster, having Ken Shamrock on your roster, having Eddie Edwards on your roster, bringing back Rob Van Dam, and, and, and you decide that the main event attraction for your biggest show of the year is going to be the guy who wasn't good enough to make the main roster in WWE in Rich Swan, and the guy who made the main roster as a jobber in Eric, in, in Eric Young. So you have the 205 Rich Swan and the wasn't he a jobber on SmackDown Eric Young. That's your main event of Bound for Glory. That's fucking terrible. No one wants that fight. No one wants that match. No one wants... It's just... I'm so fucking done. This is this is honestly the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And, like, it would have been... It would be one thing if there just wasn't another option. Like, I remember in 2014, we are like, what's the Bound for Glory main event for the year? Like, who, like wh- what are we fantasy booking to? And we're all kind of like, I guess it's going to be Gunner, you know, because they're doing this Nick Aldis Gunner feud. Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like. Like, that's where we felt it was going. And, and at, at the time, like, we had lost Sting, Styles. Like, no one wanted to see Rude in another main event title scene. We were good. So we're like, all right, I guess that's fine. We have nothing else. <sighs> but we have alternatives this year. Shit, you put Willie Mack in the goddamn title fight. He'd at least be someone that I think fans would want to see win the belt. You know, he doesn't have the baggage Swan does. He's far more charismatic than Swan. And arguably, he's a better all around worker than Swan. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's got that initial push into the title feud that you need to really propel him into stardom. But at least he's someone that doesn't come in with so many question marks. You can rely on Willie Mack. You cannot say the same thing about Swan. So, like, I'm sitting here going, the fuck? And why the fuck is Brian Myers beating Willie Mack? 
Why is Brian Myers even on my television screen? Who thought it was a good idea to put Brian Myers in a goddamn singlet with his goddamn Brian Myers lame-ass bullshit name with his dumb blue and orange New York Mets color scheme and his stupid fucking Harlem Gotham-esque fucking graphics? Fuck Queens, New York. Fuck the Mets and fuck Brian Myers. He's so bad. There's nothing about him that's intriguing. He's so unoriginal. He's so uninteresting. He's like, where's Waldo? Only he's right in the middle of the page and no one's going to buy the fucking book. Yet you still bought it for someone anyway. Why? Why? And like, it'd be one thing, Zach, if he was like doing like yeah. one segment a week or if he was like in like a two minute segment a week or if he was like a backstage mm-hmm. interviewer. He's getting 12 minutes a fucking week. He's going yeah, over on Willie cool. Mack. He's cutting promos every mm-hmm. week. And he can't cut promos. He's bad at it. I'm the most professional wrestler ever. Oh, shut up. He looks like one of those goddamn, what, what was those uh, Red Hots? Is it the candies? He looks like a fucking Red Hot that was thrown in a microwave and put on high, and then thrown against the wall next to Heath Slater. Like that, that's, that's the best, best compliment I can give Brian Myers. He's a piece of candy that was nuked and thrown against the wall that correspondingly enjoys time next to Heath Slater. <laughs> I mean, at least with Heath... They're may, at least they're keeping Heath as a joke character that can't get a job. They're not pushing him against someone like Willie Mack. Willie Mack lost the X Division title so he could job out to Brian Myers. Honest to God, the only thing that makes sense is that Willie Mack is leaving. Yeah. <laughs> like... But Slam Reversal was supposed to be like this, this coming fucking you know era that was going to redefine the company and put them up in into the future but they ended up just doing every goddamn mistake in the book that they've been making for the last goddamn seven years uh-huh. like i love the machine guns i do i'm glad they're the champions but you brought in another team who has been there for a day and they win the titles yep <clears throat> diana prazzo Half a second, maybe four and a half point three five five seconds in the company wins the world title for the knockouts division. Eric Young, 14.24 seconds after he was born, he wins the world title on impact. And they do it within the span, like what, three weeks of each other? Yep. I, again, it'd be one thing if you were talking about, say, the Rascals, Rosemary, and Moose. It'd be one thing. But all you keep saying with these new additions and winning the belts is that you don't have anyone on your roster worth winning. And that's not a good thing. Like, if it was, a, if it was an individual situation where, like, the machine guns were the only one to won, or Eric Young was the only one, or Deanna was the only one who won. Okay, fair. Yeah. But it's every... God damn time. In fact, Moose had his belt stolen by a new character after beating the hell out of everyone he faced for months. And it was and it was just a fake championship anyway. And they still did it. There's a part of me that really thinks Don Callis and Scott Demore are asleep at the wheel. Because mm-hmm. they cannot be this stupid. Like, honest to God, like the booking in this show is really and, and it, it feels like they're booking for the lowest common denominator, because why are we still doing the Sue Young Susie shit? Who who's actually excited about that nonsense again? Sue Young's not even that good of a worker. No. And now you're trying to put her on television twice as Susie and Sue Young. Like, she's yeah, cute. That's her selling point. I, I've, I, uh, 
at this point when Susie's out there and they like Josh and Masson constantly bring up the fact that she's also Sue Young, it's like we haven't seen Sue Young in like a year. Who cares anymore? Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. And then you have fucking Kimberly, who might just be, I don't know, one of the 10 best female wrestlers of the last decade. Mm -hmm. And she can't get a fucking win. No. Fucking Rosemary hasn't really wrestled a match in close to nine months. Yeah, I mean, that... (laughs) That's that's the question. Like, why are they keeping Rosemary off TV, off off of out of the ring? Mm-hmm. Essentially, my only yeah. thought is that her knee didn't heal correctly. Because I mean, her match at Wrestle House was like her standing around yelling at Taya. Basically, I have to wonder what she has left in the tank. Like, she got herself back into shape, and she should be commended mm-hmm. for that because knee injuries, you know, especially at a certain age, really take a lot out of you, you know, especially when you're someone who's always in shape and you're always working out, you know, you're basically told for five months, you can't do shit except for rehab. And that's not enough to get your, your cardio up. So she deserves all the credit in the world for getting herself back into great shape. But is she not able to do it anymore? She's like the only maybe one of three people on this brand that I would keep around, even if that's the case. So like no harm, but yeah, I mean, let's not beat around the bush and just, I mean, granted it my you know, the, the whole thing about the, the character kind of a thing would come in, but still just either put her ass in the ring or say that she can't wrestle anymore. Make her a manager. Make, have her manage Crazy Steve. That would be amazing. Do a fucking intergender tag team uh, series. Like, boom. Yeah. Right there. Could have Rosemary and Crazy Steve. You could have uh, um, um, Sammy Callahan and Jessica Havoc. Mm-hmm. So it says she's wrestled 10 times in 2020. She wrestled uh, in a tag match with Ro- with Taya against Kylie and Susie. Yeah. She did uh, what looks like an eight-woman tag match with Alicia, Havoc, Kylie, and Neva, and Susie versus her, Taya, Tasha Steeles, Kira Hogan, and Kimberly. She did mm-hmm. the Slamversary gauntlet match. And then she did the Rosemary Kylie match at Wrestle House. So she's wrestled one singles match since April. And April was, and before that was the hardcore match against Havoc, I think. Let's see. March and April. March had her wrestle Kira in a loss. And April had her in the Full Metal Mayhem match against Havoc. Ah. So she's had two Russell House matches, and those were her only singles matches. Yeah. That's it. She's wrestled six times since April. Five uh-huh. times since April, not counting April. Also, can we point out the fact that Russell House was essentially about her and she lost both of those matches? Fucking booking on the show is goddamn terrible. This is that it's not even 50 50 booking. This is this is seriously just people going, well, you know, if she loses, it drives the narrative forward. And I'm just sitting there going, what the narrative of her being a loser who can't win? That's not a narrative you want to be telling, folks. Zach. When someone wins 20 times in a real sport, do you think they're Mm -hmm. good or bad at what they do? I think they're pretty darn good. Someone loses 20 times in a real sport. Are they good or bad at what they do? I think they're not too good, Chad. So if you're trying to tell me that wins and losses matter, but all you do is lose, what's that to me supposed to tell me? That you're good Mm -hmm. or bad at what you do? 
Uh, well, it seemed to indicate that you're not good. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. In combat sports, more than any other sport, uh, star power, name, brand recognition, and name value are the name of the game. Mm-hmm. If you got a brand people want to see, fucking Bob Sapp can, can still draw in Japan in an MMA fight. He's, honest to God, this isn't a joke. He's like 11 and 17. Yet you put him in a, in a, in a fight in Japan, and he's still going to draw 20,000 people. So you would hope that he would win because yeah. it improves his name value. Like, CM Punk was brought in the UFC not because they thought he was going to Anaconda Vice his way to a, a, a welterweight title shot, but because he was a name. Mm. You want the names to win. Because if the you names do. win, then they look better. And if they look better, that means more people want to see them wrestle or fight. And if more people want to see them wrestle or fight, eventually more people are going to want to see them lose. And then you can parlay that off of building a new star. But the thing is, is they still have to win pretty consistently even after you start building that new star and even after they get that loss. Because if they then start to lose so badly after dropping the belt or passing the torch or what have you, all you do is make the person who took the belt off of them look like they just beat an old dude. Uh-huh. Like, that's not a good thing. So there's that perception that in wrestling that seems to be almost offensive now that you book your stars to win. I don't know when that became such an offensive ideology, but it, you know, apparently that's where we're at because we don't want to book our wrestlers to win. We don't want to book our stars to win. We don't want them to be too big. Zach, we don't want them to get the, uh, the Hogan warrior egos. <laughs> It's stupid. It's sincerely it, stupid. Everything's it, watered it, down. Talent don't matter. It's callous and fucking it's the more ruined Bound for Glory. Yeah. And it wouldn't hurt so it wouldn't hurt as much if they hadn't built if they hadn't gone up and then went crashing down. Right, if if we had just parlayed from the t- Tessa shit to this Without mm-hmm. any optimism or, 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 you know, constantly telling people like, oh, yeah, new, new impact coming after, after Slammiversary. All these names going to be big. <sighs> then, like, all right, fine. But, you know, you, they promised us the world. They got us hyped. They're like, oh, we might bring in Rusev and James Storm. Oh, here comes Mr. Anderson. Maybe you'll get EC3. Oh, look, Eli Drake. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You know, guys, trouble, 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 trouble. But instead we get Brian Myers, fucking Heath Miller, goddamn Deanna Parazzo. I don't think anyone cares about her. Fucking. And again, nothing. No, that's not her fault either. No. That's your fault. Yeah, that's Impact's fault. Fucking Eric Young. Oh, Rich Swan's back. Oh. They're, they're awesome. They had they have no faith in their veterans. They put Trey Miguel and Ace Austin in the main event of their biggest show of the year. When you have, like, what, Rob Van Dam and Sammy Callahan? Like, what were they even doing? Like, Sammy Callahan was in the tag match, right? Yep. What was Rob Van Dam doing, Slammiversary? Nothing. But we got to make sure Ace you? Austin gets in. Oh, of course. Kyle, make sure Ace Austin gets in. Kyle, make sure Ace Austin and Trey are in the main event. Can't have Rhino. Can't have Tommy Dreamer. Can't have Rob Van Dam. Can't have Moose. Tommy Dreamer and Moose were on the old school match uh, car, uh, part of the card, by the way. Mm-hmm. I think I'm rebooking Simon Verse Ray tonight. But Chad, your night was over. My anger has propelled me forward. As it usually does. That, that Zach, that's all I am now. Hate and anger. And a little stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Ooh. 
Speaking of food, I should not be eating. So Wendy's has a new beer f- battered cheeseburger. You, you, you hear this bullshit? Really? So it's 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 not it's like fucking beer cheese with Swiss uh-huh. cheese, fried onion rings. I think bacon's on this bitch. Pickles and either uh, your your choice of, of of different chicken stylings, your grilled uh-huh. home style uh, spicy, or you can get it as a burger. Well, I got a, a, a home style chicken sandwich like that, and I'm going to tell you it's not that bad. Oh, yeah. it's, it's fucking kicking up a uh, acid reflux like a motherfucker. <laughs> but like in two weeks, when my blood pressure returns to normal, <laughs> I, I will I would like to try it again as a burger this time. But I'm gonna have to wait two weeks because that shit was. Whoo! I don't know what the calories were, but I'm pretty sure it was in five figures. <laughs> Is a 10,000 calorie cheeseburger excessive? <laughs> Maybe slightly. Just want to know. All right, <laughs> we're going to run through this card real fast from last night because it's not, it wasn't a good show. They gave us all the no. fucking no one caresies. Uh, Deanna Prazzo and Kimberly defeated or lost to Susie and Kylie. Kylie watched as Susie twerked and tweaked. They're going to do a fucking bullshit finish at Bound for Glory where Deanna wins because Susie returns or Sue Young returns. <sighs> I'm already mad about it. Trey Miguel wants a title shot at Rohit Raju's X Division title. But TJP's up next, so Foul Ball rolls up, and he's like, uh, yeah, what's up? I know how to do... No, wait, that's... that's. Nope, sorry, I'm combining two segments. My bad. This show sucked. <laughs> I, don't know how, if, I don't know if I was still boiling over from the week before when we found out that Swan and Young were going to be the main event or not. I don't know. So Rohit and, and Trey Miguel, I guess, are going to face off next week. Or, no, Trey versus TJP is next week, I think, is, is something... No, uh, Trey versus TJP is tonight, and then the, the next week will be a triple threat with TJP, Trey, and Chris Bay. All I'm hearing is dumb, 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 dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. I still that from Dr. Cox. He said wrong. I'm saying dumb. So like imagine what I said only wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Either way, it works. It does. Yeah. So, um, yeah, f- fucking this is another example. Goddamn Chris Bates just won the title at Slammiversary and three weeks later, goddamn fucking Rohit Raju of all people takes the belt off him. Like, I, I want to root for Rohit. I do. He seems like a good dude. Yeah. I mean, not as a character. He's, he's, a, he's a twerp, but, like, whatever. But, again, same bullshit. And now what's Chris Bay doing? Why did you bring in Chris Bay? Why did you give him the X Division title? Why didn't you just keep the belt on Willie Mack and, and then had fucking Rohit take it off of him? So fucking stupid. That is the question. So... Taya Valkyrie's quote-unquote chihuahuas confront Johnny Bravo about who his best man for the wedding is and why they care was never explained. And then Falaba no. rolls up. And now is the best man. And Falaba says more than Ba now. And yes, w- now w- he... W- but, but how does he know how to speak more than just Ba? Google Translate. No, it's just a translator. You said Google Translate on the show. Oh, did he? I thought he. I thought yeah. he. Was, I thought he said just a translator. No, so, he said Google Translate. Whether it's Google Translate or whether he's got a, a book of body English dictionary, which is the one I'm hoping for, he can talk now. We yeah. knew. We knew it was coming eventually. Just, just keep the bot in as, as a gimmick, and you'll be fine. Uh, so Bravo then makes by his actual, um, his actual fucking best man for the wedding. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Falaba is going to be in a demonic wedding. 
There's not a lot Why of things. Not? There's not a lot of things right in this world. There's not a lot of things right in wrestling at the moment. Falaba is the best man in the, in the demonic wedding. Somehow, it's just perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's like Davey Richards coming back, winning the title, and, and going on to have a two-hour Iron Man match with an in-shape Eddie Edwards, and Falaba being the best man of, of a demonic wedding. Like those are the two things in this world I want. <laughs> Granted, the second one I didn't know I wanted until I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Triple sometimes X- things just work out that way. Sometimes they do. Triple XL takes on the Daners, Cody and Cousin Jake. I, honest to God, I was sitting there like, ah, God, I haven't seen Cody Diener in like six months. Where the fuck's he been? There is. Oh, yeah, he was in Wrestle House. Because <laughs> like, I, I, I just completely forgot that Cody was doing all that shit because I'm like sitting there like, God, when was the last time I heard the Daners music? It's been about eight weeks. And then it would actually longer than that because he was stuck in Canada for the longest time because of the, the, the COVID. So, yep. like, so like I genuinely forgot that Dean was in Wrestle House because of the goddamn lack of songs. <laughs> if someone had, if Dreamer had come out and screamed match time, I think it would have hit me again. But nope, I, I actually had to think about it. Like, when was the last time he wrestled? Oh, yeah, in Wrestle House. So. This is stemming over from the uh, the beer that Crazy Steve stole. Crazy Steve, you silly monkey. Uh, they put over AC Romero's weight loss. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Triple XL win by de- defeating the Deaners, and I'm a little sad because the Deaners are awesome. Yeah. Trey Miguel defeats TJP in, in a f- match. Yeah. Like they work well. That's fine. They do. Nothing about Good it. Gonna, nothing about it's going to make you want to remember it 20 years from now, though. No, I mean, it was it was a good match, but it was nothing different than anything else we've seen. The Rassos get their ass kicked for not helping out last week. The North and uh, um, Ace Austin and Sawyer Fulton jump them backstage. Oh, no, they're out of the main event. I wonder who's going to replace them. It's going to be uh, Doc and Luke. Or Doc and Carl, my bad. Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh, then we get Dr. Ross tells the guns that Desmond Wentz will be un- uh, unable to compete tonight. The Good Brothers then step up and say that they're going to be their partners instead. We then get Rich Swan calling out Eric Young and Scott Demore, but it's actually just Scott Demore, and then Eric Young comes later, and then Young and S- Swan rabble rouse and then the more like what you don't seem to remember eric is whoever's got the the, the anti-life equation controls the ring and eric young was like that doesn't make any fucking sense and the more's like if what if you read the dc universe you little <laughs> cunt and then young replies with i only read archie comics and swan just laughs and goes of course you do <clears throat> Then Swan goes, that Betty's hot as shit, though. And everyone's just nods in agreement. So they say that Hopalong Swan is going to be taking on Eric Young for the world title in the Bount and for Glory main event. And I'm just sitting there going, who wants this? Sincerely, no one. I could yeah. not be bothered. I could not be bothered. Uh, then we get Taya asking Rosemary to be at ringside for her match against Hero Hogan later. Rosemary wants Taya to be to help her resurrect her officiant for her demonic wedding with Johnny Bravo, but Taya is busy. This doesn't make any sense because of what happens later with, with Rosemary, but we'll get there. Brian yep. Willie Mack finally defeats Brian Myers, and I don't care. This is the worst feud on Impact Wrestling because it's got fucking Brian Myers in it. Rosemary then goes to, to Jessica Havoc and says that only the one who murdered a person can bring back a soul from the undead realm. Havoc is furious by the request and attacks Rosemary. If she needed Havoc's help, why did she beg Taya for her assistance? I, I assume it was to have her come and be back up. Here's the thing. You can't assume in the story. That's fair. In a story, you have to express or allude 
to the solution or to the, to the rise in action, the climax. Because otherwise, what the fuck? It's like you, 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 know, you open up a movie with a dude looking through a sewer. You know, he's in a sewer and he looks up and he goes, yeah, this will do. You don't know what the fuck he's doing. You can't just assume that he's checking pipes. And then at the end of the movie, he's escaping from a bank, and then he jumps in through a little little hole in the ground and in the bottom of the bank, and he's in the fucking pipes. And you're like, oh, my God, it all loops around and makes sense. Ah. No. Can't assume. That's not the way storytelling works. You have to put in evidence towards what you're talking about. Yeah. They did not do You're not wrong. Uh, Moose is going crazy. EC3 is like, hey, I got your belt. John Doe, Psycho Boy, on this title. Moose calls Jericho. Okay. Is that who he called? Yep, that's who the demo god is, is Chris Jericho. I don't understand the, the why he called Jericho. They they even put Jericho's Twitter handle in the in the segment. Oh, they did? <laughs> yeah, like if you look at uh if you look at it on on their official impact Twitter account, uh nine twenty PM September 15, 2020. The uh, tweet reads Moose looked for advice from one person. Sorry. Moose looked for advice from the one person who has experience with their world championship being stolen. Impact uh, hashtag ah. impact on access at I am Jericho. I am Jericho. <laughs> so when was Jericho's title stolen? I think he, I think it was uh, the, his 2000 title reign. Oh, uh, when he won it and then had it taken back because Earl Hebner did a fast count. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Not really. It was an episode never of tr- Raw. Never trust Hebner, though. No, it was an episode of Raw. Uh, it, it opened up with a Jericho Triple H title match. And Jericho was getting, you know, manhandled because, you know, no cell Triple H. Um, I think he pushed Hebner and Hebner pushed Triple H back. Jericho grabbed uh, Triple H's tights, rolled him up, and Hebner did a one, two, three fast count and won the belt. And Jericho was like running around the ring with the belt and everyone's freaking losing their minds. Everyone's like, oh my God, Jericho's the new world champion. Jericho's the new world champion. Jericho, why is Mick Foley out here? And Mick Foley was the commissioner. And he's like, I can't in good conscience let this title match. You know, stand as is. You did not win this belt fairly. It goes back to Triple H. And I'm sitting there going, God damn, this is the dumbest thing ever. And I'm watching this segment going, God damn, this is the dumbest shit ever. Why is fucking Moose calling Jericho unless you intend on bringing in Jericho? And if you're intending on bringing in Jericho, why are you playing this game? Why not just start putting out uh, uh, fucking, you know, uh, um, vignettes for it? Dumb. Yeah. Rhino sneaks Heath into the building to execute a plan that will earn Heath some money for his hashtag Heath for Impact campaign. Boy, I sure wonder if this is going to involve arm wrestling. It does. Tennille Dashwood and Jordan Grace appear to have a very different definition of working. They already have a match set for next week. It's almost like you don't want to build to match if people want to see anymore. No. Like you you would think. Just throwing this out there. You would think that you would want to put it in two to three weeks to build up a match that might actually draw a number. You would think so. Fucking show's terrible. Kira Hogan with Tosh Steel t- took on and defeated Ty Valkyrie. This isn't going to go well for their wedding. Not their wedding, but Ty is what? Yeah. Not Ty's wedding. Rosemary's wedding. That Rosemary didn't yeah. accompany Ty to the ringside, so now there's going to be some bad blood, like a Taylor Swift song. And no one wants that. You know they're building up this f- for a fucking goddamn Bound for Glory match, right? Tasha versus not, not Tasha. Um, Ty versus Rosemary. I mean, at least it's something. Is it though? It doesn't definitely doesn't have the build up that you would want it to have, but 
No, no. Still we're... taking over everything else they're giving us. True. Rhino challenges Hernandez to an arm wrestling match, but Heath Slater commits Grand Theft a lot. Uh, uh, Grand Theft. Grand Theft. There we go. I don't Grand Theft. Why. Yeah. I don't know why I was trying to come up with the third word. I was about to say Grand Theft Lottery. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> it's, it's it's either petty larceny or Grand Theft, depending on the amount he stole. But uh, that's mm-hmm. not exactly the best way to go about, you know, putting him over as a face. We then no. get we then get Chris Bay, TJP, and Miguel all arguing with Rohit over who is next in line for the opportunity. Rohit continues to play his games. He tells them to take it up with management. Trey suggests a triple threat match with the winner becoming the number one contender. That's not management. <laughs> That's the opposite of management. Uh, Rohit said, take it up with management. I was like, finally, someone take this up with management. And no, no. they did. No, they did not. <clears throat> we then get the main event. It's the North and Ace Austin and Madman Fulton taking on the Good Brothers and Motor City Machine Guns. This was fine. Yeah. You know. It did what it was supposed to do. The That's heels win. Mm-hmm. That, that, was, that was this week's episode of Impact. Yeah. Not exactly the riveting affair that, we, that we're accustomed to. And I, I cannot lie, I, I think maybe some of my disinterest in the Bound for Glory main event is kind of souring my view on... Uh, um, impact at the moment, so we'll see. <clears throat> I mean, it's fair. If one is one definitely impacts the other, if not them both kind of feeding off of each other. Mm-hmm. I'm scrolling through headlines real fast. So that's it. We're done for the show. <laughs> Uh, I, I expect us to be recording tomorrow, but I do want to point out something there, Zachy boy. Okay. I, I am covering the Browns this season. Ah. The Browns have a Thursday game tomorrow. Night. Yes. Browns have a game tomorrow. Now, I'm going to try to make it work, but if you get a okay. text around 7, don't be surprised. I, I will let you know if there's no show. Otherwise, plan for the show. Okay. I do. Is there anything else we need to do to prepare for other than lead Joe Superior? No. Well, uh, the, the point of these is to focus on one topic and deep dive. Okay. Whether it takes okay. us 20 minutes or two hours. It might take us 20 minutes. <laughs> it might, but it was a damn good show. Mm-hmm. So with all that being said, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P, Dot com. Our woman crush for this week is Samara Weaving. Our wrestler of the week is Jonathan Gresham. We're bringing everything in, ha- in house, by the way. I'm done with the Tumblers. You're done with the what? The Tumblers. Ah. The bin Tumblers. When they got rid of the porn, they ended up getting rid of our traffic as well. <laughs> I did not realize. Say, is it everyone done with Tumblr? Yes, I did not realize how necessary our ratio was for those looking at smuts and those looking at us. <laughs> it is a drastically high number from that source. Just putting it out there. So we are going to be doing our posts to our woman crush and wrestler of the week on the website now. Oh, and, there you go. and I'm going to be working on rankings, I believe. But but not necessarily a rankings post. My idea is I'm going to do one post a week or one post a month to let people know what's going on, who went up, who went down, why things went the way they went, and then keep it kind of a running tally on the website proper. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's my theory. It's going to be very easy to manage. I just need to figure out the best way to format it. So, yeah. I sit here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
As I hold my hands up high, lying anxious burns inside. As I throw that hairs to one. Sort of bended on a Sunday morning, banging my head. Don't hate Creed's first album. No, I do not. He, he, it's, it's, good, it's good, good, good album. My Own Prison. Solid stuff. Nothing wrong with Creed. Solid stuff. Second album, all right. Third album, couple hits. But uh, then it's uh, right off the goddamn cliff. Unless you like Creed Light, a.k.a. Altered Bridge. Ah. A.k.a. Edge's theme. On this yes. day, I see clearly. And it holds like up my eyes. But he does cut out a lot of bullshit from the actual song, so. There's yeah, that too. There's no random ass drum intro. The that, that Edge's theme song comes out with, not in the song. No. <laughs> Sorry. So realnordcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We're on Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. Zachy Boy can be found on Instagram and DeviantArt at Radiance2020. R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E 2020. That's it. And I'm over on the Twitter at Chad Nerd Corp, C H A D N E R D C O R P, and on the Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Remember to watch more wrestling. And remember, if it doesn't say Binford, it's made by somebody else. <laughs> Zach, take us home. Good night, Bound for Glory. <laughs> <laughs>